Whoa, it's a big ghosty. Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. I'm fishing at the prolific Packington Fisheries near to Coventry. I just fancied doing something a bit different today and I'm targeting the carp on simple tactics, just float fishing in the margins. And I've just hooked into my first decent fish. It's fighting really well. And actually, I've, I've just seen it, and it looks like it might be a, a ghost carp. And I'm going to take my time as it's the first fish, and I'm not... I've set two rods up, and this is my lighter of the two, so... I'm going to give this fish some respect, and... Hopefully, we'll get him in the net. Definitely won't give up, that's for sure. Fantastic. Look at that, Monty. That's what we came for. It's a beautifully conditioned ghost carp. Probably about six pounds. Absolutely spectacular fish, and what a fight. Well, what a beautiful fish that ghosty is. I don't catch very many of them and I'm thrilled with that one. When we got here we baited up a few different spots so I'm going to get this fish back and then we're going to go and try another spot but that was the theme of today really. Just travelling light and fishing in the margins and hopefully catching some better sized carp. Well, after the disturbance of hooking and landing that beautiful ghost carp, I'm going to top this peg up with a bit more bait. Then I'm going to go and try one of the other spots that we've already baited up. It's a really quick session this in the evening. It's, uh, we started around about five o'clock and I think a lot of people can relate to it. It's the sort of session that you can fit in after work this time of year when the Evenings are getting longer, it's just brilliant to get out and grab a few hours fishing. So I've just got the bare minimum of gear, a little bit of bait, and we'll try and catch what we can this evening, but hopefully we'll catch a few more carp, like that nice ghost carp. Come on then, man.
big gear is here at Packington Somers is a beautiful lake. All the lakes here are really nice and established and many of the different pegs have got some great features. So when I got here this evening, I baited up four or five different spots that all look really promising. And I baited up with just a mixture of different size pellets, just some odd open bags that I got in the van and some sweet corn and just dampened it slightly so just to ensure that everything sinked quickly and I could even make a small ball out of some of them so basically I just got a good amount of feed in all these spots and uh, I'm just going to try them now just to really increase my chances of of catching. A lot of commercials like Packington Somers have got some really nice sized carp in them and they've also be obviously become very wary over the years and it's quite often that you'll catch the carp in the evenings perhaps after matches have finished and many of the people have gone home so I think the carp have obviously learned that this is the time for them to really feed and mop up all the bait that's been left and perhaps feed with a bit more confidence so I was also inspired to come and have a go at fishing like this because we had a cadence open day at the weekend and there was um, a number of juniors that came in particular one guy another another lad he's called James who's only 14 and he really showed us the way. He was fishing very simply, fishing bread in the margins, and he caught by far the biggest carp that day. So he kind of inspired me a bit to relive my youth and come out and fish like I used to. So it's, a, it's an exciting way to fish, that's for sure. So I set two different rods up to float fish on this quick session. And this is the heavier of the two. I've got six pound line that I'm fishing straight through. And I'm fishing in a, well, it's, I don't suppose it's a conventional way, but I'm float ledgering. And it can be a really devastating method when you're float fishing for bigger carp like this in the margins. Sometimes if you fish with a more conventional rig, maybe one with a bit more finesse, you can find that you'll get bothered by smaller fish. In fact, when we started on the initial swim, I caught some crucians and some nice skimmers. They're not the target, so I'm really trying to, to focus on catching the bigger carp. So hopefully this more positive rig will help us uh, target some of the bigger carp that will hopefully be moving into the margins to feed as the evening progresses. I'm fishing a bigger hook on this rig as well. At the moment I've got double corn on so I've got a size 10 hook and I'm fishing with two pieces of corn. The great thing about fishing a float like this is when you're switching quickly from one peg to the next you can soon determine the depth because you're actually fishing the, the bulk on the bottom and it just takes a matter of seconds to adjust the float and you can be actually really accurate with it and it's actually a very very sensitive method as well. I think sometimes uh, another advantage of fishing a more positive rig like this when you're targeting bigger carp is that uh, a more sensitive lighter rig would show up a lot more bites or maybe false bites, line bites and bites off smaller fish that you don't want to hit and you can see that on the float at the moment I'm getting lots of knocks and dinks and there's obviously fish feeding in the area and I'm just waiting for a, a positive bite 
and that'll either be the classic float just sliding away or it might even be a, a lift bite as the fish picks up the bait and pulls the bulk off the bottom. So this is that positive rig that I was talking about and the float I'm using that's just a very simple 2AA peacock straight waggler and I've just attached that by threading some silicon on the line and then simply pushing that into the silicon. So it's tight enough to fix the depth but I haven't got any locking shot around it at all. And then this peg I'm fishing is about two and a half foot deep. So I've set the float so that this bulk, which is made up of five BB shot, is just sitting on the bottom. And I like to lay the rig in, depending which way I'm fishing and which way the wind's blowing. So I swing it away from me. So that bulk's on the bottom. And then at the moment, I've got around about a foot tail to my hook with no other shot on. So that bait there is on the bottom. And that's great because I want to ensure that that bait stays on the bottom and presents itself in a very natural way. Obviously, if I was missing bites, I might shorten that bulk and bring it closer to the hook. And by fishing with a bottom end only float like that, I've got the advantage of being able to sink the line as well. So I'm just gonna flick it out and then sink the line and just bring the float back. So you can see now that the bulk is pulling that float down. And very quickly, it's easy to work out the contours of the area that you're fishing. This here is in the margin where it slopes quite quickly down. So it's getting deeper as we go away from the bank. And hopefully that's gonna be a great spot for the bigger carp as they're patrolling along the margins. There's a bit of a knot going on there now, whether that was a, a line bite or maybe a small fish just having a go at the corn. But that's why I'm intentionally fishing with a bigger bait. I've got two big pieces of corn on, just in an attempt to try and avoid the smaller fish and leave the bait there for a carp when it does come. The great thing about this method when you float ledger in is that it doesn't really matter about the conditions, it doesn't really matter how windy it is. So as fishing in a strong wind, that float would hold perfectly. It wouldn't get blown around like a lighter rig would. There was definitely something down there. It would just be great to get another nice big carp now. Well, fishing like this is definitely a relaxing way of fishing. It's not too hectic in terms of feeding and casting. And it's just perfect for a quick session just to unwind perhaps after a busy day at work, so such an enjoyable way of fishing. Foul up bream. Well, that got me going. Thought that was another carp initially, but I think it's a, a foul hook skimmer bream. Not what we're after. Let's get him back and See if we can catch another carp. Yeah. Well, that's definitely not a skimmer. It's a nice carp and he's trying to do me under the platform. I've seen some swirls 
right close into that tree stump next to the bank and I just repositioned my float, I just shallowed up a little bit. Wow, it thinks it's a salmon. <laughs> Anyway, it uh, took the bait within seconds of placing the bait right next to it, so this is definitely a better fish. There it goes again. <laughs> well, I've got a six pound line on this rig. And the rod I'm using is the 13 foot number three, so it's got plenty of power to cope with bigger carp like this. You can see it's bending really nicely and absorbing all the lunges of this carp. Comes month. Not quite. Nice one. Well, that's exactly the kind of fish I was targeting on this evening session. I'm going to unhook him in the net and then bring him out and show you. Well that's a nice long thin mirror carp, around about eight pounds. He fought really well. Absolutely brilliant. Let's get him back and we'll go and try another peg. I often just when you're catching bigger carp like this, just obviously revive them in the margins and then just let them go from the net. Brilliant. So I think I'm going to sneak back to the original swim. I definitely saw some more carp up there, so we'll give that one another go. I put a fair bit of bait in as well when I left it last time, so hopefully there'll be a few more carp banging around there. So I just thought I'd quickly show you the other rig that I'm using in this quick session. Obviously, the great thing nowadays with ready rod sleeves is you can leave your rods set up. So, you know, you can leave them in your van or car and you can get fishing really quickly to save time. But this is the other rig and it's um, a two and a half AA Drennan puddle chucker float, which as you can see is quite short but it's buoyant and it's got a really nice size tip. So I won't dot that right down like I normally would when I'm float fishing. I'll leave a bit of that showing. So again, I can hopefully read any line bites and wait for a more positive bite. And I've just got that simply trapped on two AAs and I've got two number eight shot around about a foot from the hook and I'm fishing that so that those shots are just off the bottom and again that just helps me to 
to register bites and try and pin the bait down on the bottom. On this rig I'm using a size 14 Guru hook and I've got some different hooks tied up, some with hairs and some where I'm just fishing straight on the hook like I am in this case. So I've got some different options with that and I'm fishing that on four pound pro gold. And then on the float ledger rig, I'm fishing with six pound pro gold. I showed you the float before, which is attached just with a piece of silicon with no shot at all. I've got the bulk and I've got a, a bigger hook, a size 10 guru. So it's just given me two options. The last two carp off hooks have been on the more positive rig, so I'm gonna stick with that because obviously if I were to hook a, a bigger double figure carp, I know there's carp up to 20 pound in this lake. I've got much more chance of hooking it and landing it and getting out of this quite tight peg. That last carp I hooked went straight to the left and tried to get through that gap. So I am having to hold on to them a bit, but they really are simple rigs, very quick to set up, but also really effective. So the best hook bait today has been corn. And I think I mentioned I'm putting two pieces. I'm selecting the biggest bits of corn and I'm putting two pieces on the hook just to try and avoid the smaller nuisance fish like the crucians and bream. So I've just got the corn mounted on the hook like that. When I've been using a hair, I've got a bait band and that's enabled me to switch to different baits like pellet and just sort of ring the changes really. But it seems to be corn that they're picking out today, so I'm gonna persevere with that. So I'm targeting bigger carp and I'm feeding really positively. I've already got through a couple of cans of corn and um, a couple of uh, pints of four and six mil pellets. So I'm feeding heavily because the fish are feeding. There's obviously a lot of smaller fish here and the carp are coming in and out and probably mopping up all the food really quickly. What's lovely now is it's so peaceful. I think I'm the only person left on the lake and obviously most people have gone home so we've got this wonderful lake here is here at Somers on our own. I guess I'm predominantly a matchman and I, I do find it hard to leave the knocks and plucks that I'm getting. There's obviously a lot of activity down there and you've got to be patient and wait for that positive bite. Sometimes it's maybe the smaller fish have just got hold of the bait or the bigger carp are feeding around your hook and line and just rubbing against it. So you really want to wait for that positive bite because if you did strike at a line bite, maybe risk foul hooking a fish or spooking a fish, you've got to go back through the process of feeding and attracting them and getting their confidence back. Well that was a great bite and this skimmer fooled me. I thought it was a decent carp. Never mind, still a nice fish.
I've kept feeding quite regular with pellets and corn and just had another bite and I've got another carp on. You can see how progressive the rod is. It's got tremendous power, this 13 foot number three, but it keeps bending. And that fish, when I hooked it, really tried to get through to the left where there's a gap in the island. seen it yet so I've no idea how big it is but it's definitely fighting. There we go. Another nice car. Didn't want to come up off the bottom. Well, that's worth coming for. A just fantastic sport in a short session like this. Just grabbing a few hours after work. Superb fish. Let's get it back. Thanks for watching. There you go. Let's see you again when you're 20 pounds.